Getting ready for the Anime Awards has been difficult for obvious streaming war reasons. Kind of hard to watch, you know, every anime released from Japan when they're on multiple different websites, and some not even available in my own country. Well, thank goodness I have NordVPN. This video has been sponsored by NordVPN, an amazing virtual private network service that can unlock all sorts of content with just a simple click. Watching anime can be difficult with region locking blocking you from watching certain shows, but as long as you have NordVPN, all you really have to do is click on another country and voila, you'll be ready in no time for the Anime America Anime Awards. With over 5,200 servers in 59 countries, you're safe to explore all sorts of streaming services from around the world. And thanks to Nordlings, you won't ever have to worry about lagging or bandwidth issues. And you can take my word on it, I've been using NordVPN for a long time now and haven't had any issues or complaints whatsoever. Oh look, it's also NordVPN's birthday! Yay, happy birthday! So if you go to nordvpn.com slash animeamerica and use the code animeamerica, you'll get an extra month for free, plus an additional gift with a purchase of a two-year plan. What a nice little gift from them. Wait, isn't it their birthday? It's risk-free with Nora's 30-day money-back guarantee, and again, it's a wonderful service that I love using. If you too want to celebrate NordVPN's birthday while also taking advantage of this sweet little deal, just go to nordvpn.com slash animeamerica and use the code animeamerica today. I know it's late. So what? Shut up. Welcome back to First Episode Impressions, where I watch the first episode of a series and feel the need to talk about it. I'm sorry this episode came out later than I wanted, but if I'm still going to get the Anime Awards 2021 ready, I might as well make an episode sharing my thoughts on the Fall 2021 lineup. Honestly, this is the year for sequels, because yet again, we had sequels like Restaurant to Another World 2, 86 Part 2, Yashahime Part 2, Jobless Reincarnation Part 2, JoJo's Frickin' Bazaar! Our adventure, Stone Ocean, and I don't know, some Demon Slain show that I totally remember to review a while back. I'm still working on it, I'm sorry. Well, this just goes to show that the newer titles had to fight extra hard to get some attention out there, and after watching all the first episodes of each series, I can honestly say, well, they tried. Not gonna lie, the fall lineup had a handful of memorable titles for good and bad reasons here and there, leaving the rest making me feel a little... Me? I'm also going to mention that picking the best of this lineup was not easy compared to other seasons as I mostly felt like they were good, but nothing notable compared to some of the other titles in 2021. I'm not really saying they're bad, far from it, but um, I don't know, they were just uh, good, if that makes any sense. Maybe I'm not making any sense, but who cares, you know the drill. I'll talk about the shows that were in the middle for me and continue with the ones that stood out to me for good and bad reasons, leaving the best and worst for last. And boy howdy, you may actually be surprised with my choice for worst, so let's go! Let's get this started with an anime that's pretty endearing, but I don't know if I want to watch any more. Blue Period is a coming-of-age story where an aimless student doesn't really know what to do with his life. He's instructed to make a random painting for his art class, but doesn't really know what to paint, until he sees the city completely covered in blue, calming light. At that point, he is inspired to draw and paint while wondering if taking an interest in art is beneficial for his future. This is the type of story that can be relatable for most people stuck at a crossroad while struggling to figure out their own lives. And while I do get that, I honestly felt like this kind of story was told better through Remake Our Life. Still a good story, but I'm just not that interested. My Senpai is Annoying! is actually annoying. It's about an obnoxious saleswoman getting annoyed at her co-worker for using innocent gestures that make her feel belittled or like a child. That's basically it. Maybe it's just my jaded side talking or my experience dealing with annoying people like her, but I never liked characters who finally get to a certain age and act like everyone around them needs to take them more seriously or else. I call those types of characters Ariel for obvious reasons. Like, I get it, but at the same time, you should let your work do all of the talking and just chill. If you couldn't tell from my rant, I'm not too fond of this show, but that's just me. This series just running with one joke, and that's it, so I'll pass. 
The faraway paladin is another isekai, but it starts off with a bit of a mystery. It's kind of like jobless reincarnation, but our reborn hero is being raised by a skeleton, a mummy, and a ghost, and they're based somewhere that looks a bit barren and abandoned. Ooh, mysterious. It's not bad for another isekai, but like with other isekais, it's nothing too special. The Fruit of Evolution is basically So I'm a Spider, but it stars a bullied victim becoming the hero. A classroom full of students are sent to another world to start a new life together, but the one everyone bullies gets left behind. The god who sent them all away realizes he forgot this student and just sends him to another corner of the kingdom by himself. And from there, we see the classmates start out pretty easy inside of a random kingdom, while our main hero has to survive in the wild and form his own party. Like I said, it's just like so I'm a spider, but it's catering more towards bullied victims who are given the short end of the stick, only to work hard and end up being the main hero with a bunch of waifus following him. Not the best isekai I've seen, but I've definitely seen worse. Vampire Cosmonaut is very, very random. A military nation is pushing forward in the space race by trying to put the first human in space soon after they sent the first animal to space. But since they lied about what happened to the dog after he was launched into space, <laughs> Or doggo. The military officials don't really want any more accidents or controversies to happen as they try to send an actual human being to space. So they go with the next best thing. They find a vampire. They find a vampire. They're sending a vampire to space. I get it. I don't get it. Yeah, apparently they believe nothing bad will happen if something happens to her during launch, i.e. no family members to mourn her death or public press accusing them of murdering a human. But she's not a human. She's a vampire. This anime was brought to you by the word technicalities. Overall, this is just a typical underdog story for the vampire and the soldier taking care of her. As random as the idea may seem, it's also a bit predictable. And speaking of vampires, the vampire dies in no time is pretty cute. Just about a vampire hunter meeting the supposed progenitor of all vampires and he's weak to everything. You can just sneeze on the guy and he just dies. Again. And again. And again. And now you know the joke of the show. It's still pretty funny as I think the timing of each joke is pretty spot on. Plus they wrote a kid who's the embodiment of every little brat who just has to ruin your day at work but his mom swears he's just a perfect little angel and you just hate children, don't you? Okay, that's just my customer service shade rising again but I digress. It's a cute show and it's pretty funny. Whoever wrote Build Divide Code probably watched Yu-Gi-Oh! and thought to themselves, this is great and all, but do you know what would make it better? Waifus. Blue Eyes White Dragon? Psh, yeah, no one wants that. Everyone wants waifus. Perfect. And that's basically it. It's a battle royale show with cards, but the ultimate winner gets to have any wish granted as long as they win a certain amount of battles and defeat the so-called king in that little tower over there. Yeah, I've seen this before. Next! Deep Insanity, The Lost Child. I can barely remember what happened. Um, something about Antarctica, recruiting soldiers to fight monsters, recruitment centers making obnoxious ads to enlist naive idiots to become heroes while lying about sending new recruits to their deaths. This line here sounds like a mask mandate joke. No saving a city when it gets to this point. People are gonna get Randolph Syndrome. Not like you could do anything to stop that from happening. Oof. Yeah, not gonna lie, this is just flat out boring and forgettable. The Night Beyond the Tri-Cornered Window is basically using the power of Yaoi to exercise lingering spirits away, how am I wrong? A random dude can see spirits, so an exorcist uses his body to put the ghost to rest and uh... Yeah, they're just having a grand old time over there, aren't they? Surprising to no one, I have read something similar to this. What? What are you looking at? As for this show, it's alright. Deji meets girl. I have no idea what's going on, but it sure looks pretty. Some guy checks into a hotel and fish. They're everywhere. No one really knows what's going on or why it's happening, but we're just vibing. Look at these fish. Look at them. It's very random. Let's just enjoy the moment. 
Never thought I'd see a day like this, but I think he visual saw Isekai Quartet and thought to themselves, oh, we can totally do that. Kaginato is basically every key visual series coming together in a project that'll make you laugh instead of cry. Key visual series that'll make you laugh instead of crying. There's a first for everything, kids. I'm not too fond of key anime, as you probably have already seen from my past videos, and I could only recognize two shows from their catalog. But if you like key visual anime, this is for you. Kyokai Senki feels like it's trying to be a less dramatic version of Code Geass. I'm not even kidding. Japan suddenly got divided into four military nations, so of course they go to war with each other to gain complete control of the country. A young man somehow finds a random mobile suit and a sentient companion that powers the ship. Our hero decides to fight back against the injustices plaguing the country and aims to free his people from this unnecessary war. The theme reminds me of Code Geass, while the aesthetics remind me of G Gundam. It's not a bad combination when you think about it, but I've seen this story a lot, so I'm gonna pass. So I guess Japan still wants to introduce new types of sports to anime fans by creating waifus for that sport. Already, I'm getting Uma Musume Pretty Derby flashbacks. Help me. You guys like hockey? You guys like waifus? Well, here you go. It's Puda Ore. It's just about a bunch of girls joining the hockey team. That's it. It's harmless. It's cute. If you like hockey, it's got waifus now. Hooray. Rumble Garam Ball is basic. There's an alternative universe where the military took over Japan using humanoid mobile suits that look like something out of SD Gundam Force. It's your typical fight the military show with military commanders being too controlling of the country and our main lead somehow finds a rebel group with their own set of chibi Gundams to fight back. Nothing really new here so I'm just gonna pass. Megaton Q Musashi is also on the basic side, but it's a tad bit better. It's kind of like a typical shonen anime if it had hints of the Matrix put in. Basically, these people think they're living in simple and mundane lives, but they're actually living in the last sustainable hub world for humans to live in since aliens destroyed their planet five years ago. Those who don't know this truth are sent to protect the hub world from alien attacks hellbent on destroying all humans. So of course we have a hero who coincidentally lost his entire family to an alien attack determined to protect this home and wipe out all the aliens. Like I said, it's pretty basic. You ever just look at a show and scream to yourself, Aesthetics! Anyone? Just me? Okay. Well, that's what I did when I watched Mute King the Dancing Hero. This is a shiny 80s and 90s dripping show that I really wanted to like, but the story is just okay. It's just your typical Super Sentai scenario, but with a dancing hero. It looks cool, but that's it. Super Crooks feels like a story I've seen before. I'm a sucker for 70s, 80s aesthetics, and I love how this show looks. But the idea of a young man discovering that he has superpowers only to use his powers for evil and greed rather than good is nothing new. And to complicate things further, Super Crooks decides to become a super villain heist show? So it's like every other heist story, but with supervillains instead. I'm sure some people will think this approach to a heist story is very interesting, but I've never been too fond of the heist genre myself unless your name is The Great Pretender, so I'll pass. And finally, we have China's approach to the X-Men, Da Wong Rao Ming. It's got decent animation, but it's got X-Men vibes all over it. People are discovering hidden abilities within themselves, only for shady figures in black to show up and take these special individuals away. Our main hero just wants to go to school and take care of his little sister figure, but things may not turn out so well because of his new abilities. It's a bit boring for my taste, so it's a pass. And that takes care of the shows I consider to be meh. Now let's go to the shows that grab my attention for good and bad reasons. Oh boy, just wait for the worst. Tacked Up Destiny is just fun for me. Mysterious creatures hate music and will wipe out an entire area full of humans if they hear music. The only ones who can defeat these creatures are humanoids called music arts, but they can only fight if they're contracted with a musician who can perform the pieces they represent and become their conductors. Look, as silly and basic as it is, I honestly love the musical angle and the fight scenes are done extremely well, so I plan to watch more. 
Miyuruko-chan is definitely a different approach to the horror genre, to say the least. Any typical person would scream bloody murder if they saw... That. If they saw that. I know I'd be startled to look at that thing. Ew. But our main girl Miko tries to fight off these spirits by completely ignoring them. And it totally works. Dude, I am honestly interested to see how long she can keep up with this while seeing all the creative things she'll do to ignore these ghosts. So this is a plus in my book. Now here's a fun isekai, there's one in every bunch. What happens when a professional assassin gets killed on his last job, so a god takes pity on his soul and decides to put him in a new world with his memories intact? You get the world's finest assassin. As predictable as it may be to give this guy a new life as an assassin while giving him assassin wife who's by his side, the goddess who chose him actually gives him an interesting task by the end of the first episode that I'm really not gonna spoil here. This task alone makes me interested to watch more, and I think you'll like it too. Also, my ranking is precious, and it made me tear up at one of the scenes. I love this little guy. A young prince is born deaf and muted, so he's seen as a joke to his entire kingdom. A shadowy figure literally takes advantage of his naivete, but starts to worry for a child so desperate to find a friend that he's willing to give up his expensive clothing just to talk to someone. My little guy, he's so innocent. I honestly had a hard time deciding if this was the best anime of the fall lineup, but the ending of the first episode sealed the deal for me. The entire kingdom basically underestimates him. Severely, but he is going to prove to them all that he's not some weak little prince, and one day he will grow to be a great king. Pretty much a don't judge a book by its cover story, but it's still wholesome and I'd recommend it. So, what happens when you're in a battling party and you got that one jerk calling you out for being weak and you just say, fuck this, I'm out? And you just decide that you're done with adventuring and you just want a simple life while owning your own little store. Not gonna lie, that actually sounds super appealing right about now, but that's banished from the party for ya. While everyone else is heading off into the world with all their hopes and dreams of becoming strong and gallant heroes, this guy here is just flat out done with it all and just wants a simple life. I'm sure with his sister being a famous hero, someone's bound to try and rope him back into the adventure, but my guy here is like, that sounds like a you problem, not mine. You want some health potions? Buy one, get one free. This show has my kind of vibe, I appreciate it, so check it out if you're interested. Taisho Maiden Fairy Tale to me is the Duke of Death and his maid, but better. Yeah, I said it, what of it? A young lord suffers a horrific accident that costs the life of his mother and the use of his good arm. His father, being the ever so practical asshat that demands perfection in his family, exiles him from the family and leaves him in a mountain home to stay in until he dies. But he was kind enough to at least buy him a wife to take care of him. Wow, and people think that Abuela is the problematic parental figure here. Yeesh. So this is an awkward scenario for the young lord who feels like he has nothing to live for now, and a young maiden arranged to marry him when she comes of age, but she's never met him before and was only sent to cover the debt her parents owed his father. She was a bit scared at first, but she knew from the moment they met that he's actually a kind individual. It's at this point that she decides to do her best to take good care of him, while also trying to put a new spark of hope in his pessimistic heart. If I'm going to continue to watch this, I'm hoping it's not going to be one of those she can fix him scenarios where he's the only one being looked after and proving that any soul can change with the right partner by your side. Nana, nah, nah, I'm hoping for more like a Beauty and the Beast scenario where she helps him so he decides to do his best to make sure that she's happy. If you've seen the show, let me know in the comments how it goes because I'm really hoping for the latter. Sakugan is frustrating. I wanted this to be good since it's a father-daughter adventure show and I've been craving for something like this. But this whole show just screams, hey, I'm a clone of Tengen Tapa Garen Lagan. But this time I have a bratty female lead and an overprotective father acting like every other overprotective father. I just have a big feeling I'm not gonna like this. But you know me, I'm not too fond of bratty characters who don't like being treated like a kid. Ariel. Let me know otherwise if this gets any better, but Sakugan is just giving me bad vibes. For any world history or just Japanese history buffs, this anime may grab your interest. 
Heike Monogatari is an artistic adaptation to the historical epic The Tale of the Heike. The whole piece depicts the struggle between the Taira clan and the Minamoto clan for control of Japan at the end of the 12th century in the Genpei War. The anime in particular centers around a young girl who can see into the future and foretells the end of the Taira clan. She tells this to one of the clan's lords as he discovers that it was his clan who was responsible for killing her father because she mocked the clan unintentionally. Instead of being offended by her words, he decides to adopt her while figuring out how to prevent his clan from falling. I for one never knew of this epic and didn't realize that this was an adaptation of one of Japan's oldest tales, so this definitely piqued my interest. With its style, story, and presentation, I'd say this is definitely worth your time. Selection Project is another idol show, but I do like how it starts. A young girl dreams of becoming an idol despite her medical condition keeping her bedridden most of her life. She makes her way to the Selection Project in hopes that she'll be selected for the finals. Think of it like American Idol, but with singing idols. So what's a million times better? Episode 1 ends in a very surprising way that makes me curious to see how it'll go from there. So if you're looking for a new idol show, maybe give this one a chance. Visual Prison is my trash and I'm keeping it all for myself. It's Pretty Boy Vampires and a Battle of the Bands scenario. Gimme, I want all of it. There's singing, there's Pretty Boy Vampires, my Hot Topic angst days are screaming and I'm loving every second of this. It feels like I should have more to say, but I don't. This won't be everyone's cup of tea, but I'm here to take the entire tea kettle from myself and run with it. Bye! ASMR Anime I know it has a different name, but let's just call it Spade a Spade. A bunch of anime girls get their hands on an ASMR microphone and... Yes! It's exactly what you think it is. Just cutesy anime girls playing with the microphone while making cutesy ooh ooh sounds and they're in my ears. Get them out! So yeah, this was a trip for me. But I'm just gonna end this segment with a quote from my friend Mikey, who's a sound engineer. It made me uncomfortable. 10 out of 10. Shiki Zakura is dumb, 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 and I hate some of these characters. Demons are trying to possess humans, so it's up to these ancient Sentai fighters to stop them. As basic as it is, the aesthetics seem promising by combining Sentai fighters with Japanese traditional themes. But then we get to our characters, and I'm just done. Our main hero is fine. The sentient Oni suit that he has is actually pretty cool. The Shrine Maiden is likable. I like her, but her companions, ooh, they are awful. This is your fault. You were targeted because you lack self-esteem. A few seconds later, and those things would have made a lunch out of you. You weren't able to realize that? Dude, I have low self-esteem issues with possible traumatic memories and literally had no idea Onis existed. How the flying hell should I have known this would happen? Yeah, the side characters alone ruin this show for me. They're honestly giving me 90s Uranus and Neptune vibes, and y'all know how I feel about them. Tesla Note should be my choice for worst anime of the fall lineup, and it came close. Like, really? Really close. Look at this. Are you seeing this? Like, I'm sorry, but do we really need another X-Arms? This is X-Arms. Look at this. What the actual hell? Why did the year 2021 decide to give us two equally bad quality shows that poorly animates everything in 2D and 3D? I don't get it. I will say that the story is a lot better than X-Arms. That's still not saying much, but it's at least something I can place in my so bad it's actually hilariously good category. At the very least, Tesla Note made me laugh and I'll give it points for that. As for my choice for the worst anime, it just made me downright furious. But before I reveal my choices for best and worst anime, let's just address the elephant in the room, shall we? Y'all told me this was the next big topic. Y'all told me people were getting offended at this one and wanted it wiped from the faces of the earth, similar to how Twitter reacted to interspecies reviewers and Redo of Healer. I expected Worlds and Harem to have similar vibes, something adult and extremely etchy, so of course it's controversial. But y'all didn't tell me it had an interesting story. Yeah, you heard me. Here we go. Worlds and Harem has our main lead suffering from a disease that could kill him unless he's put into cryosleep, giving doctors plenty of time to create a cure. By the time the cure is ready and he wakes up, he discovers that he's one of few men still alive after a virus wiped away 99.9% .9 of the male species. The assistant who woke him up informs him that his condition now makes him immune to the disease which ultimately makes him and a handful of other men the perfect candidates for, you know, 
repopulating the world? <laughs> and just when I thought this was gonna be a trashy, don't take any of this shit seriously kind of show, the show actually tries to take it so seriously with two major factors. Unlike the protagonist from Peter Grill, ugh, God, I hated that show, this guy actually wants to find his childhood sweetheart first before making any decision to mate with anyone else. Naturally, people are gonna try to pressure him to do the deed and forget his girlfriend for the greater good, for all of mankind, do it for your country, son. But he wants to find her first while continuing her research to find a cure. At the same time, he discovers that the virus was man-made, so there's someone out there who wanted all men to die, or at the very least, dwindle their numbers so that they'd become nothing more than breeding stock. Huh. Am I about to watch the rest of the series just to make a review? Yep. Ugh, fine. Only because I didn't expect an actual plot to come from this. At this point, you should be figuring out at least one anime I haven't talked about yet. And yes, I have chosen it to be the best anime of the 2021 fall lineup, Komi Can't Communicate. And while it was hard to choose between this, Osama Ranking, and Heike Monogatari, I just had to pick this one. It's the first day of school and our main lead, Tadano, just wants an average high school life with no attention at all. That dream gets completely shattered when he sits next to the most popular girl in school, Komi, and everyone wants him to die. Immediately. Because, how dare you sit next to a goddess, you filthy slime pig you? Yeah, typical high school stuff. It still sucks. Despite Komi being popular, she doesn't have any friends because one, her classmates believe that she's too good to be their friend, like they literally treat her like she's a goddess. And two... <laughs> oh my goodness, Komi has crippling anxiety and she can barely speak because of it! Oh my goodness, she's precious. Tadano is able to get her to talk about this via chalkboard writing and decides to try and accomplish her dream of having 100 friends. It's going to be difficult since a lot of his classmates treat him like dirt just for existing, but also... Could it be that you want to take a picture of me being stupid and use that as your wallpaper? Oh, please do that. I'd love it so much. His classmates are weird as f and while there are a lot of comedic and eccentric moments, the series also tugs at your heartstrings, especially at the end of episode one, where Komi and Tadano have a heart-to-heart -heart moment on the chalkboard, and it's honestly one of my favorite scenes of the year. This scene alone solidified my choice for best anime for the fall lineup. Definitely give this show a chance. So, I've come to a decision. If Ray Rodriguez himself claims that this is not an anime, then I'm not gonna count it as one. Granted, I'll drag it a bit further if we discuss Crunchyroll Originals, since this is in their catalog, but this is more like an honorable mention for worst anime for this video. If you'd like to know why, check out my review of High Guardian Spice. I sing in it. So, if High Guardian Spice and Tesla Notes are not my choices for worst anime of the fall lineup, then what is? Which anime from this lineup was so bad that I didn't even give it a second thought? High Guardian Spice doesn't count. Tesla Note made me laugh. This anime... Whew, this anime lied to me. Platinum End. I swear, this was going to be good. I was hooked at the very thought of this show. People were calling it the next anime. Death Note, and I believed them. Mirai's life became so miserable soon after he lost his family that he decides to end it all. Just before he dies, though, an angel picks him up, determined to grant him a second chance at life. Her name is Nase, and she tries to encourage him to keep living. But when he seems determined to die, she decides to bless him with two heavenly abilities. One that'll allow him to fly anywhere around the world with angel wings, and the other grants him the ability to summon arrows that'll either make his target fall in love with him or kill him in the most painless way possible. Well, that escalated quickly. With his new abilities, he discovers that his uncle was the one responsible for killing his parents and baby brother because he wanted the entire family inheritance for himself. From this point, I thought this would be great. He could fly around and help those who suffered just like he did while debating if he could honestly be a true arbiter to this world, or rather, if he had the right to carry out justice with his new abilities. You seeing the Death Note connection here? Hmm? Seeing it? Seeing it? But no! The angel then tells him that there are other people with similar abilities and are now candidates to become the new god of their world. To put it simply, this is a Mirai Niki clone! Are you kidding me? We have another Battle Royale anime 
But this is seriously a clone of Mirai Nikki! My god, I have not felt this disappointed in a while. Like, this could be in the running for the most disappointing anime of 2021. Next to a certain other show, but we'll get to that later. <sighs> Platinum End. You could have been better than this. You really could have. So that's it! That's the fall anime lineup for 2021 and 2021 anime in a nutshell. If you haven't seen my thoughts on the winter, spring, and summer anime of 2021, the links will be in the description box down below. I have a lot to think about for the anime awards, which should be ready soon. Keyword should. Should be soon. Hopefully. So my question to you all out there is which anime from the fall lineup did you like? Were there any titles here you think I should have given a second chance to? And which anime do you believe is the best anime of 2021 that was not a sequel? Eh, yeah, got you there, didn't I? Leave your answers in the comments down below. Before we end this video, I just want to thank all of my Patreon supporters yet again. Your amazing generosity has meant everything to me and to this channel. So honestly, I can't thank you all enough. And of course, thank you to everyone for watching this video. More awesome videos will be on the way, so stay tuned to Anime America.